Hello Isopod friends, this is Jay and today we will talk about Porcilio Wernery and some tips for a successful culture of these isopods. Isopod series number 17 Porcilio Wernery. I started this culture last March. I purchased 12 isopods from Brittany and it's October 2021 when I was doing this video. So it's about 7 months old culture. I have a lot of mankai right now and the culture is thriving. So let me share you my experiences with this isopod. Let's get this ball rolling. First, let's start with my favorite subject, taxonomy. Porcilio wernery belongs to family Porcilionidae. Porcilionidae, they don't roll into a ball. They have two pairs of pleopodal lungs. The number of flagella segments is two. It belongs to genus Porcilio. The perion pleon outline is continuous. Species is Wernery. It was first described and named in 1926 by Strohal. Species characteristic, these are native to Greece. Their shape is round like a shield, but it's very flat. They have a dark gray body and white margins or white skirts. They look very similar to Persilius spatulatus. They are also taught to be a seasonal breeder, meaning they will only breed once or twice a year. The immatures or juveniles have pale color in the middle. They get darker as they mature, looking like a classic gray inside and a white skirt, the adult form. Their defense mechanism, they run fast rather than playing dead, like some giant porcilio. Enclosure setup, they require larger enclosure, at least 15 quarts, sterilized storage container. Substrate, a mixture of dry deciduous leaves, organic potting soil, sphagnum moss, aspen snake bedding, coconut core, and RODI water. 75% of the enclosure is bone dry, like very dry. They can die if they're exposed to a substrate that is very wet and they cannot retrieve to a dry part of the substrate. And 25% of the enclosure has to be moist with sphagnum moss for them to rehydrate. For their furnishing, uh, you have to provide them a cork bark or a rotten wood so they can feel safe and hide there. Um, they really do well with rotten woods. As for their diet, um, their main food is decaying leaves. But being a persilio, I give them a protein source like a chiclet pellets. And they like to eat it. They're not very fond of carrots, zucchini, or squashes like the rubber duckies or the amaryllidium. They won't touch it and it will just grow molds. I would recommend just leaves and a protein source. For a calcium source, you can just give them cuddle bone or you could just leave them alone. As you know, calcium is present in both plant matter and in soil. This is a very controversial topic, but I just want to let you know that they will be fine if you just give them calcium um, source like cuddle bone once in a blue moon. But one important thing that you should not forget is springtails. They are the cleanup crew and they eat molds in the enclosure and they also keep it clean. And now, let me give you some tips on how I made my Persilio Wernery having mankais just within 6 months. First, ventilation. This isopods needs considerable airflow to thrive. Make sure 
you have a large hole or window for ventilation so the air won't get stagnant. Persilio thrive with good amount of air circulation. Second, warm compost tea. When I mix my substrate, I pour some warm compost tea from my warm composting bin to the mix. The tea contains nutrients and beneficial microbes, and sometimes they come with free springtails too. I also put some egg crates above the moist sphagnum moss. As you can see, some Porcelio wernery are inside the egg crate dome. They use the egg crate dome to rehydrate and to molt. Remember, they don't like to be submerged into a really wet sphagnum moss or they can die if they can't retreat to a dry place. This egg crate dome is perfect for rehydration and molting. Also, the enclosure size is very important. Size should be not smaller than 15 quarts container. The bigger the enclosure, the better for Persilio. They require a lot of space. Also very important, Persilio requires a dead air space in the dry section of the enclosure for proper air circulation. I think I mentioned about dried deciduous leaves, rotting woods, and fish pellets as their primary source of nutrition. Most importantly, protein. Persilia requires protein more than any other isopods in the hobby. Without it, they won't thrive. Another thing worth mentioning is they're actually smaller in person than what you think. I think we have a mental picture that Persilio are bigger. But this isopod is actually a medium sized Persilio. One last tip try not to bother your culture. I check mine once a week. I would like to give a shout out to. Jose Avila and Edwin Lopez. I purchased some isopods from them and they were very generous to give me freebies. I will give a proper shout out to them again when I do a video on those isopods that they sent me. Thank you so much. Also, if you like anything from this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.